Even if you're growing with the cleanest inputs, your plants can still be filled with heavy metals, pesticides, and other toxins. Today, we're gonna talk about why and give you one simple trick to protect your plants. Come on, before we do. Today's video is brought to you by Real Growers Recharge. If you want stronger, healthier plants, if you want bigger roots for better fruits, you gotta check out Real Growers Recharge. It's like an instant compost tea that holds more nutrients at your root zone, breaks those nutrients down, and makes them more plant available, getting more of your nutrients into your plants. Find out more about Recharge over at Real growers.com and while you're there use coupon code scotty420 to get 20 percent off your first order now let's get back to the show come on high c let's grow some good clean medicine okay let's start by dispelling a myth yeah people always say organic is better and even at like whole foods organic man you got to go organic sure but organic doesn't always mean clean and safe. No, you chemicals, man. Uh -huh. now, organics and synthetics, we talk about it, that the plant absorbs those nutrients the same in that ionic form. So now it's what's left over. Organics are, they're sometimes they're mined materials. Uh, that's, you know, you can have heavy metals in the soil. It's very common to have heavy metals in the soil. These are little impurities. You know, not much is pure in the soil you've got to take it out and refine it so uh there are heavy metals in there that are of concern and when we talk about compost everybody's like yeah i used compost what did you compost did you compost grass that had roundup did you compost manure that came from a, a concentrated animal feedlot mm -hmm. you know what i mean they're giving these animals antibiotics and all that crap and it's coming through the compost we did a story on the dude grow show about it as to where all these uh, uh, organic materials are having antibiotics in them. The microbes can only partially break them down because they're antibiotics. They're meant to fight microbes. Yeah, and especially nowadays, as factory farming is more prevalent yeah. and the food industry is more of an industry than food, a lot of the stuff that we're getting for our organic inputs, has it comes downstream from that. Definitely, man. And I'm thinking also about milorganite and all those, they call them biosolids. A lot of the crops you get are grown with biosolids and milorganite comes from the Milwaukee, Milwaukee Public Waste Department. Okay. Wow. And the antibiotics come through. It might be fine for your roses outside, but those type of things that uh, uh, those toxins and those pathogens can avoid being or can survive the composting process, I guess is what I want to say. And isn't cannabis, it's kind of one of those plants that just kind of sucks up everything around it. It is a bioaccumulator. That means, yes, what is in the soil, it will suck up, whether it's an essential element or not. That's where silica gets sucked up. It's not an essential element, but the cannabis will accumulate it. All right. So if I'm growing organic, there's still the possibility of stuff in there that I don't want. Even if I'm growing in like cocoa and I'm adding stuff to the cocoa, sure, I'm still going to have that risk of stuff in there that I don't want. Even rock phosphate, even stuff that's, that ends up being in your synthetic fertilizer, it all matters the inputs. It all matter where, matters where it was mined, how it was refined, organic, synthetics. They're both coming from the earth and they're both gonna have these impurities in them. Yeah, so it's, you can either try to pull them out at the factory, I guess, or just what we're doing is trying to keep them from being absorbed by the plant in situ, right where it's uh, right where all the activity is happening. Okay, so let's talk about that. You promised a tip on how to keep my plants safe. Yes. What's the tip? Microbes. All right, there you go. I've tipped my hat, sir. But soil microbes are absolutely amazing at sequestering, which is, which is uh, holding and really chelating. Chelating is, it's, it's, I think it's Greek for claw, but it means you're holding these materials in this immobile, uh, non-plant available position. And then what's really cool about the microbes is they can either send a signal that it needs that stuff. All right, come on, release it. Bring it on over here. I've got some uh, organic acids or I've got some exudate for you, some food for you. Or it can just hold them. It can be like, hey, I don't know. I'm not getting any signal to release this lead. 
because the microbes aren't gonna ask for lead. They're not gonna solubilize lead. I'm sorry, not the microbes, the plants, because the plants send down those exudates and they kind of program the microbes. So the plants are gonna say, hey, I don't need this thing, but I do need this thing, help me out. Exactly, and they're not gonna ask for lead or cadmium or any of those heavy metals that we wanna keep out. Those are gonna be clawed and, and stuck in the claw. Okay, and there's a couple of different ways that soil beneficial soil microbes will help those toxins, heavy metals, antibiotics, all that different stuff yeah. that you don't want getting into your plants. Can you kind of explain the different ways that the soil microbes work to sure. help protect your plants? The bacillus actually will solubilize. It'll actually um, go and put acids or enzymes on that pathogen and it will convert it. And I shouldn't say pathogen, I'm sorry. What I meant to say is heavy metal. And what I'm thinking about is practicing this with my wife. She was kind enough to listen to about three minutes of it yesterday. <laughs> and I said, oh, these microbes are amazing. And I just randomly grab something. I go like, it could take this stuff called chromium six and it convert it into chromium three. And chromium six is super toxic. And chromium three is a micronutrient that you put in vitamins. Uh -huh. And she's like, yeah, that was on Aaron Brockovich. Oh, see, I wouldn't have guessed that. <laughs> I was like, when I started thinking about it, yeah, they were putting toxic chromium six in the soil, and it was leaching into you know it was leaching into the watershed and all that. And it's interesting to think that microbes can recondition that. That so is neat it, stuff. It takes the toxic and it alchemizes it and turns it into something that's actually beneficial. Alchemize. I like that. Uh, yeah, it converts it. It will. Yeah, I don't. It uses enzymes, and I can't. I can't tell you. I'm not deep into enzymatic relationships. It's magic. We'll leave it at that. <laughs> it's magic. I <laughs> dig it. I dig it. So it can block things. It can convert things. What are some of the other things that the microbes can do to help protect your plants? Yeah, microbes like bacillus actually create a biofilm. They create all. All of them do the uh, uh, trichoderma as well. They call it an exudate, and it's all around the roots and it does stuff first off it protects the roots uh, second of all it's able to send those signals out to where it's able to absorb different kinds of nutrients you've talked before about like a copper wire being bare sure. versus a copper wire having and the roots kind of act the same way without it, that film yeah and what they even with mycorrhizae was it does is it goes out and puts these little additional roots out there so now you've got additional surface area for the plant to colonize so you've talked about like copper wire sure. being covered versus not covered what, yeah. what's going on there biofilm they cover you know think about the bare root and then these microbes make this biofilm that actually covers the, the root, acts as a physical barrier, and then all that enzymatic action, action can happen there before it enters the root. So you've got to keep the bad guys out, the pathogens out, and it's able to make these signals to solubilize and uptake the nutrients. Okay, the last one that we've got here, and I'm not sure if these are microbes or not, but humic and fulvic acids? No, they're not microbes, but they work right along with them. So humic acid, actually humic acid, a little bit different. It's this giant organic molecule with lots of negative charges. And most of those heavy metals and toxins are positive charged. We talked about the chromium three and chromium six. Those are positive charges. That's super positive charge. So that is going to be bound magnetically to the, the negative uh, humic substance or humic acid molecule. Uh -huh. And it locks it up. So it's gonna it's gonna keep that nutrient. The plant's never gonna say, send a signal that it wants that chromium six, you know, or that lead. So it's gonna stay locked up there. And that's also they call it chelating. Chelating is the, the claw. So it's either gonna hold something or it will hold it, and then it's gonna wait for a signal and exudate from the the roots. That's gonna say, hey, I need that. And if it doesn't get that signal, it just holds on to it and keeps Stays it from Stays in the claw. Place. But what about you? Are you growing organic, synthetic? Are you adding microbes into the mix? Come on, let me know in the comments. And if you dug this video, come on, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Share this video and then talk about it with another grower you know. And check out the other couple of videos YouTube's recommending. I sure hope you dig them.